Hey, welcome back to Mr. Repair Shop. Today we're working on the trunk again because this is a problem. So we're gonna put a steering column in this thing finally. But uh, so we got most of the wires unhooked under here and all that stuff done. I'll get it pulled out, then I'll kind of show you what you gotta do to pull one of these down. But the odds of many of you having F 250s and the 99 generation isn't, isn't all that common. So we'll get the rest of this pulled down, and then I'll put it over the bench. I'll show you because I got a manual shift steering column out of it, and obviously mine's an odd magic, so that'll be different. But yeah, so we'll get this pulled out of here for real quick, and then we'll uh, bring well, I got this column. I was going to show you guys a couple, couple little quick little tips. So, seven millimeter bolt on this big harness, and a, and a five and a half millimeter on this is your shift uh, detent that actually tells you on under dash where that goes. And then on the back of the column, you'll actually see how that works. Let me drop this down. Okay. See that right there? The shifter has been set up. Like there you go. So that is where your shift lever actually goes to. So you want to pop that off. And then there'll be another little end. And I'll show you once it's out where the cable actually hooks up to the steering column. Like as like the stop. The one video I saw, the guy's like, oh, just shove it off there. Well, there's actually a little detent on it. So make sure to pull that detent off or just pull out flex plastic with a flathead screwdriver. And come on, I'll show you once I get it on. Hang on a second. Also, I'd recommend having the steering wheel actually off to do this, but I'd recommend it, but I'm not doing it. So I'm an idiot. Well, I think I missed a forgot a step. So I forgot that these bolts for the turn signal stock are these wires here. You have to actually pull out this way. So in other words, I'm going to probably pull the steering wheel off to get this off correctly. So I thought I'd give a little safe tip. When you're doing anything with your airbag, make sure you disconnect your battery and let it sit for like 20 minutes. That way any of the capacitors in the system won't go off. And be very careful on this because basically, so these two wires right here, these are your go-go's for your for your airbag so when you unhook this make sure you cover that up or something um so that way you won't accidentally you know i mean honestly static you could technically have like you know a good if you're gonna you know, give it a static charge of you know i don't know it's something and it fired off it'd be a bad deal so it doesn't take much voltage to get these things to go as a safety thing so make sure you disconnect your battery let it sit for 20 minutes at least um and then it'll uh the other thing I think you can do is you can actually disconnect all your, your positive and your negative and touch them together, and that should actually also do it. But I just wait a little bit. So I started I started that project. I thought I might have to do this. So when I started this project, I disconnected the batteries like you should anyway. And then I just uh, got to this far. So we'll take this off, which is actually fine because now what I'll do is I'll pull the steering wheel off, and then I'll put this steering wheel back on that column because that column is tan. So we'll uh, a little bit longer process, but we'll get it done. So pull these off, and I'll... Uh, Bring you back once there's something exciting because yeah all right well all right. i'm an idiot so i don't have to actually take the steering wheel off because those are just two bolts and it just goes on there i don't know why i thought i had to so that's all off now so we'll take this little clippy deal there take that off and then that'll be and this thing should come out let the key switch off still gonna figure out i'm gonna eventually take this steering wheel off but probably not today just because well you know you guys on the hawaii i mean i drove around two years like this this uh so let's see if you can see the remnants of how bad this is yeah, it's bad. All right, well, I'm gonna get that all pulled off and then we'll be good to go. All right, well, the two columns are now looking at each other. So the one difference is on the manual, this is the manual shift column versus the auto magic, was this has this extra tab here on behind this, on this bracket. So what I'm gonna end up doing is, I tested on this, if you pull these three bolts off, you take this spring out, just pop a screwdriver in there and then pop this little reluctor off. I believe this is for some of the, models that might have had like a traction control like some of the expeditions and stuff the fancier ones might have something to do with um steering angle if they wanted to see that so which it looks like a transducer because you see you have your long line short line so it would have seen there would have been some kind of a sensor probably bolted onto here but these trucks didn't have them so you pop that out spring comes off little reluctor wheel comes off it looks like that then you pull these three bolts off here and you can see already that's already starting to loosen up so I'll get that pulled off, and then I gotta pull off the shift tower or the shift this deal, all this stuff. Gotta kinda do some luckily there's all the bolts for or all the spots for where it bolts in, but replace all that. Pop 
pull this multi-position switch off. Probably might, might run this one because mine's kind of worn out. So we'll run that. And we'll get this thing back in the truck, hopefully, pretty soon. So get this all popped off, and I'll get some of the start, start switching this stuff off. I'll bring it back when I'm working on this shifter, and I'll show you how to take the key out, too. It's pretty, pretty easy on these four. Right, so we got both steering columns laying here. Get that back in there. So I got this switched over from the Automagic. With the manual, I also got the key switch out. So on these Fords, what you do, as long as you have the key, roll the thing over to the on position, and then you'll see a little, let's flip this one over maybe, maybe a little detent on this bottom side, that is this right here. And you just push that detent in and you just pull the key out. Super easy if you have the key. If you don't have the key, I'm assuming it's like GM's where you probably have to drill that out. And then um, it'll it'll pop out that way, and then you can put your new key switch in there. So, but yeah, so that's out. So now what I'm going to do is I pulled off. So some of the differences. So on the manual there would have been. I'm assuming this is probably part of the safety switch, like the neutral safety switch, um, or the clutch switch, because it was where the park. So this is the solenoid that when you put the, when you put your foot on the brake, it lets you come out of park. On the automatic, it goes over that. that so you see this bushing should be in there, but it's not. So I got this pulled off there. So I'm gonna pull this off. This this whole column will come off. We'll bolt that on there. We'll have to take this off because this is for to get the key out for a manual. So I'll pull that off. So I there's anything that bolts on there. Nope. So I'll get that off too, and that'll come off. And then put that steering shaft on. Pull the multifunction switch off. Because I already have the one off of the truck and I need to offer to get those wires off. And then it should be pretty much just about ready to go back in. So, not too bad. Like I said, I'll probably end up pulling the steering wheel off. Once it's in the truck, it's going to be easier to pull the steering wheel off. Um, just because you have something to, you're not trying to force against it. So, I'll keep switching this out and I'll bring it back once we get a little bit farther along. Because you don't need to see me take off bolts and all that stuff. You can see we got all the shift mechanism back on there on the manual column. The only thing that didn't have is there was a, a safety lock that would go in when the when the key was off that would lock this in. Well, the pin for it, you had to go that way with it. And I had to take this back apart eventually and pull these, put these new bushings in. So I'll figure that out later. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and slide this back in and pull the multifunction switch back off. If you're overdrive late. But we'll get this slid in here and I'll probably bring you back once it's sitting in here and kind of give you some more things of what you want to make sure you're doing before you you finish this out. So we're just about done. We'll get it thrown in there quick and uh, we'll bring it right, As you can see, I got the steering wheels all installed and most of the wiring's in. So what you want to do now, because I'm still not hooked up to the steering shaft yet, but there's a clock spring in there that basically what it does is all your electronics that have to be in this, the steering wheel itself, so it's your cruise control, your airbag, your horn, all that stuff runs through your clock spring. It's where the wiring goes through. And basically it allows the wires to go through without having to, you know, spin around. Well, the clock spring needs to be centered. And so basically because this thing's gonna just freeze a breeze and spin it however it wants, the clock spring's got winding in it. So what you wanna do is you're gonna go very carefully all the way till it's all the way on one side, count that as zero and then back it all the way up until you feel it stop on the other side. Count that as zero. Then go halfway between there, make sure your wheel's straight, and you should be okay. That way you're not. If you don't do that, you'll be, let's say you only got two turns this way and seven turns this way, but you go to make a turn that's three turns that way, you'll break your clock spring off and then your airbag, your horn, all that stuff won't work. So I'll kind of show you on the other one. You can see it's kind of, you can't tell, but it feels like it's like a valve as tight as it can go right here. So it'll be zero, so we'll count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so I'm getting like twenty six. Rotation, so I'll go back 13. One, two, and it should be right. So, so that would be centered up. 
close enough. Like I said, your, your steer box probably doesn't have that many turns in it, but you want to at least start off centered. So we'll do that on the other thing and we'll get that all bolted up and I'll bring it back once it's all together. All right, we're out here test driving. You can see it's all tight now and it actually turns a whole lot better. The only issue we're having so far is the horn's not working, which when I did that, you know, I just sort of showed you guys how to reset the clock spring. This one never felt like, I mean, I spun and spun and spun on it, never felt it tight. So I wonder if the clock spring might be broke in this unit. So I'm actually going to see here, I'm going to, um, I'm on kind of a abandoned road here. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get, if cruise control works. If cruise control doesn't work, that tells me that that clock spring's probably broke, which is not that big of a deal. I can. I gotta. I want to take the steering wheel off anyway, eventually, to replace the. Uh... Yep. I got no cruise control, so that tells me that that clock spring must be broke. So I'll, when we get back to the house, I'll tell him to pull this airbag off and just make sure nothing's unhooked in there. Because this did come out of a junkyard. And actually, my buddy gave it to me. He had a rolled over truck, and uh... but other than that, it's pretty. Uh... It is a whole lot nicer to drive um, in person what the other one was. So I don't know why I drove on that one so long. I've had this, I probably had this steering column like two years, I think, maybe maybe over a year, at least over a year. So I don't know why I didn't put it on faster. It didn't take me that long. All right, I'm going to keep driving it. I'll bring you back when we get back and I'll see if I can figure out that clock spring. After uh, doing that test drive, I realized that clock spring was broke. So went ahead, picked a new one up. So got a new one right here. I did actually get. Um, I got the one off the old one. I'm actually going to come show you. We got to see what a clock spring actually looks like here. Do, do, do. So, if you look, this one says, this is the one off the old steering column. And it's, it would probably work, but I'm this far into it. And it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's 180 bucks for a new clock spring, but it'll be done. So, you can see that, see that ribbon there? And see how when you turn, let's see if I can... Which is cameras here. So we turn that 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 ribbon winds up either way, depending on which way you turn it. So that's what so all those wires in there. That's what carries your current or your all your wires. So you have your plug in here, and it runs through all those wires that come out here. So another plug in here for your cruise control and all that stuff. And this is for your airbag. So that way, all those wires can stay connected while you turn. So the new ones actually come pinned, so they're set in the middle. So that's down there now. Anyway, so go back out. And check this out. So I'll have to pull this back down and then pull that wire. And actually, that wire, and it's the wire I fixed or I changed on the key fob so I could actually not have to run that one broken one, which now is fine. But we'll go ahead and get this pulled out and put the new one in, and hopefully, everything will work. So. Give me just a couple minutes here and I'll get that all switched around and I'll bring you back. This is the problem with the other one. So that ribbon was broke. So I don't know if over the years that thing's sitting out and it had gotten spun around so many times it finally broke off or what, but yep, definitely bad. So this will throw that away. New one right here in this big fancy bag. We'll get this put back on. It's really nothing special. Like I said, I want my, my steering wheel's already centered, my wheels are centered, which is what you want to do. Instead of just holding the camera, but see, see how it's can't go either way. That's because this is in here. Once I get it in, I'll pop that out. But well, let's just install it. What could possibly go wrong? Oop. Apparently my wheel's not completely straight because it wants to be over a little bit more. So I'll, I'll actually do is I'll fire the truck up and then I'll move the wheels. Oh, all right. Well, as you can see, we got the old steering wheel back on now. And we have a horn, so the clock spring's all working. I don't know if you guys saw that. The other thing I ended up doing on it was uh, actually fix the... Uh, um, I can't talk. Um, the plug-in was different on the new one, so I just, re I just rewired the plug-in real quick and made that actually work. But yeah, so looks like I'm going to go out and 
test cruise control but if you don't see anything else on this video thanks for watching like and subscribe you guys know what to do um yeah so we finally got this thing fixed it's only been doing that literally i think it started like three years ago three or four years ago at winter camp so when i first started to notice it happening and then it got worse and worse and i just got lazy because i'm a turd like that but all right i'm gonna get this thing taken care of get that uh polar back over to o'reilly's and uh, we'll see you on the next one bye